So in this lesson, we're going to explore what non-coding DNA is, why the majority of your DNA is non-coding, and what that non-coding DNA does. So let's start by having a look at the relevant inquiry question in your HSC biology syllabus. So this is under module six, genetic change. This is under the first inquiry question, which is mutation. And we're specifically assessing, so remember an assess is a high order verb, which means they definitely can ask you long response questions on this. And you're specifically assessing the significance of coding, coding meaning making protein, and non-coding, meaning not making protein slash polypeptide DNA in the process of mutation. So important to understand that 98.5% of your DNA right now does not code for any polypeptide. You might wonder what it's doing there, why it's there, and what a mutation can do to that region, and that's what we're going to be exploring today. So let's quickly recall the structure of DNA. So we'll start at the largest level, which is the level of the chromosome. So a chromosome is simply a rod of protein surrounded by the threads of DNA. And you can see that when you zoom into the condensed structure of a chromosome, you can see that there are two sister chromatids here, one on the right, one on the left. Now, this indicates DNA replication has occurred. So whenever you see the X shape of a chromosome, that is a replicated chromosome. And you can see that's been listed here as a metaphase chromosome. So zooming in here, you can see that DNA has coiled around these balls. Each ball and its individual eight subunits is known as a histone protein. Now the eight histone proteins combine to form this histone complex and DNA wraps around this. Now important to note that a sequence of DNA that codes for a polypeptide is known as a gene. And the basic repeating unit of DNA is that of a nucleotide, where you see a repeating base followed by a deoxyribose sugar, followed by a phosphate. If you think of this like a ladder, the base is the rung of the ladder and the actual backbone of the ladder is a sugar phosphate complex. So before we even delve into the depths of junk DNA and what all this non-coding DNA does, very important to realize 98.5% of it, aka the vast majority of DNA, is non-coding. Now that's pretty crazy considering that each cell of yours has approximately two meters of DNA, with the vast majority being non-coding. We have multiple theories for how all of this non-coding DNA ended up in our genome. One such popular theory is that our ancestors were often infected with these retroviruses. Now what makes a retrovirus unique to other types of viruses is that a retrovirus can inject its genetic material and insert it into the human genome. Now it permanently stays there and it gets passed on from that cell and that organism to its offspring and to that offspring's offspring and continuously through generations until that non-coding DNA reaches you. So when we're talking about the vast functions of non-coding DNA, I would say don't try to brain dump it. Have a system for remembering the different roles. Now I use the mnemonic sting, and that helps me remember all the vast and complex functions of non-coding DNA. So as you can see, the S stands for satellite DNA, the T stands for telomeres, the I stands for introns, the N stands for RNAs, and the G stands for gene regulation sequences. So we're gonna have a delve into what these individual topics are about. So we're gonna to start with satellite DNA. 
And you should see that I've underlined the S in satellite. And that's to remind you that satellite refers to the structural components of DNA. Here you can see these sister chromatids, and they've been attached by a central centromere. Now the centromere is playing a structural role, and it's composed of DNA. Short tandem repeats are also another popular example of satellite DNA. They have a structural role in the chromosome, and they're simply repeats of any random base sequence found all over the genome. They can sometimes be used as genetic markers, and they're studied in the last inquiry question of Module 5. So check out the relevant video if you haven't already. Good, so now we're going to talk about telomeres. Now telomeres are very interesting. They're these caps at the end of chromosomes, and I like to think of them as the protective caps at the end of shoelaces. So aglets are the protective caps at the ends of shoelaces, and they prevent the lace from fraying and from it being damaged and unusable. Telomeres serve a very similar function. Each time a chromosome replicates, it loses a small portion of its telomere, and eventually when all of the telomere is lost, and we run into coding DNA, the cell will stop dividing and undergo apoptosis. That is programmed cell death. Point being, telomeres are protective caps that we add to chromosomes to protect the coding genes. Now important to understand, even in these coding genes, we have intron sequences. So within a gene, you have certain series of letters those are your bases that don't code for anything at all. So they're often removed from the RNA after it's produced in transcription. Now, some of the non-coding DNA is transcribed to RNA, but it's not translated into a polypeptide. Your prime example of this is transfer RNA. The tRNA picks up amino acids from the cytoplasm of cells, and it donates it to the growing polypeptide chain on the ribosome. Now, the most important function of non-coding DNA, and this is what you should mention first and foremost, is that non-coding DNA can regulate coding DNA. There are regions of non-coding DNA that can enhance transcription, translation, and gene expression for a particular sequence of coding DNA. There are also gene regulation sequences that can silence genes. And hence you can imagine a mutation in these regions is almost just as bad as mutating the gene itself. Now let's go into the details of this. So as I said, telomeres are simply a repeat sequence of bases at the end of the cell. Every time a cell undergoes mitosis, it loses some of the telomere. Eventually, when there are no more telomeres at the periphery of chromosomes, the cell stops dividing. It reaches this stage called senescence, where it prepares for cell death. And this is what happens at the cellular level for aging. So scientists have often been interested with telomeres and activating them as a possible mechanism to prevent aging. The issue is when you activate telomeres using the enzyme telomerase, we get uncontrolled cell division and we get cancer. So a very interesting area and feel free to do research on what telomeres do and how they're implicated in aging and disease. So important to note that if this was a coding gene, so in the purple we have coding regions of DNA, you also have these orange regions which don't code for any polypeptide at all. When we transcribe the DNA to RNA, we retain these non-coding regions within a gene. They are called introns. Now before the mRNA leaves the nucleus, it undergoes modification. 
and one of the key modifying steps is splicing. And you can see that we've removed all the introns from the mRNA. So now it is ready to leave the nucleus and undergo translation. Now, the most important concept we need to understand is regulatory sequences. Here you can see a gene in purple, and you can see the orange little bits of introns. I'll give you a small tip here and a mnemonic. I remember exons, which are the coding regions of the gene, are expressed as polypeptide. So remember exons, E for expressed as polypeptide, which means introns are not expressed. Now far away from this purple gene, you can see a small section of non-coding DNA. This is your enhancer sequence. Now, it doesn't code for a polypeptide, so it's part of your non-coding DNA, but a transcription factor, a protein, can bind to the enhancer sequence, which can then upregulate or downregulate this gene that is far away. And that is how gene regulation sequences act. If you have a mutation in this region, although it doesn't directly code for polypeptide, you can get incorrect upregulation or downregulation of this gene, and this leads to disease. Now I've just highlighted here, there is also a region of DNA known as a promoter. This is directly upstream of this purple gene here. The promoter is where RNA polymerase binds for transcription to begin. And that is our conclusion of non-coding DNA.